Got an exam question walkthrough here. It's structure determination involving proton NMR and mass spec. So there's the question. We're given some elemental analysis by mass for this ester. We're given the mass spectrum and we're given the proton NMR spectrum. We've got some extra information down here about the peak centered at delta 4.9 and from all of that information we've got to come up with a possible structure for the ester. So if you want to have a go at that, pause the video and then play on when you're ready for the answer. So the first thing I'll deal with is the elemental analysis by mass. That's obviously going to be an empirical formula calculation, so fairly straightforward there. The thing I'd always remember to do though is always work out the MR of the empirical formula and then what we're going to do with that is we're going to compare that to the MR of the molecule which we can get from the peak furthest to the right in the mass spectrum. So the MR is 116, so you can see that needs to be doubled, and so therefore the molecular formula is C6H12O2. So moving on to the proton NMR spectrum, so we know that it's an ester, so I've put the functional group there, that's going to help us decide what goes where in terms of the shift values. There's that information about the peak at 4.9, so you can see I've just put that um, lilac arrow there to say that peak should be about there. So we're going to take each signal in turn and just go through a set format. I always get my students to do this, so if you put all this information down and sort of build up the information as you go, you actually score marks for that. So starting with the peak furthest to the left there, we've got um, the delta value is 4.9. But remember it should be at 3.9 so that's telling us it's this environment here H to C to single bond O which obviously ties in with this side of the ester so it's that environment the area is one and so there's one hydrogen in the environment causing the signal but the splitting pattern is a heptet a signal of seven peaks and so therefore it must be adjacent to six H's so obviously the, the only way you can get those six H's is to have two equivalent CH3 groups. So that little part of the molecule must look like that. The next peak I'm going to look at is this one here, because these two peaks are kind of working together. Um, so we'll just do exactly the same for that one. We've got the delta 1.3 ppm, so H C to R environment, so that's this here. The area is six, so there's six hydrogens in the environment, so that's tying in nicely with what we've said about the peak to the furthest to the left. The doublet means that it's adjacent to one, so you can see how that all fits together. So basically, this doublet peak is being caused by these protons here, and the heptet is being caused by this proton here. So we've effectively got half of the ester sorted. We can't put anything else on this uh, part of the molecule. It's all full. Next peak I'm going to look at is this one here. So the peak at delta 2.3 ppm is an H to C to C to a bond O environment. So we're obviously dealing with this side of the ester, this environment here. Area is two, so there's two hydrogens in the environment but it's a quartet, so that it must be adjacent to three hydrogens, so in other words, a CH3 group. So that part of the molecule is looking like that. So these are cores in that peak, and this is what's adjacent to it. And so the final peak, this triplet here at delta 1.1, that must be the other part of this signal here. So we'll just go through the motions, HCR environment, area three, so three hydrogens in the environment. It's a triplet, so it's adjacent to two H's which obviously ties together with that. So these are causing that um, orange colored signal there, adjacent to those two, so split into that triplet. One thing to note here is whenever you see um, a triplet and a quartet in an NMR spectrum, a proton NMR spectrum, means you've got an ethyl group in your molecule. So putting that all together, that must be the um, structure of the ester. So if we just go back to the mass spectrum for a second, we're just going to try and identify some fragment peaks just in case there's some marks going for that. We'll deal with this tall peak first at M over Z57. And remember the higher energy electron beam in the mass spectrometer can cut bonds and fragment the original molecule. So basically you just need to cut this up and try and find something that's going to have a, 
a mass of 57 in this case and the fragment is this one here so that peak of 57 is due to CH3 CH2 CO plus fragment don't forget the plus sign that's really important to include in the formulae for any um, anything causing peaks in mass spectra we'll look at some other peaks as well just while we're at it so this peak here at 29 that's a common fragment you see in organic um, mass spec it's an ethyl fragment so CH3 CH2 plus 43 is quite common as well so that's this part of the molecule with a plus sign on so CH3 twice CH plus and the only other one I'm going to look at is this one here at 59 and that's due to this part of the molecule here um, fragmented so CH3 twice CHO plus